Okay, what we have here is a uh, Olympus EM5 Mark II, and I just wanted to quickly tell you about um, some disassembly and also about my thoughts. Uh, the case actually has about four main parts. That would be the top of it. It's a top case right here. It would also be the front section, the front of the case. And then there's also the bottom, as well as the back. Now, as far as taking off the top, the top has more than a few screw points on it. You have to take off the grips, both the, um, the right side grip and the left side grip. And you also have to take off this little cowling because there's two screw holes underneath the cowling. So this cowling has four screw holes right here that have to be removed. And actually to get access and split the case, you have to remove the bottom plate. The bottom plate has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws here. Also, if you want to take out the battery door, it's located underneath there. There's also a little retaining clip that I've already removed. Now, it's important to be super careful about um, breaking the case apart because the case has very short ribbon cables. Also, to take the case off, there are two screw holes on the back side of the case. You don't need to take off the rubber grip on the back. This thumb grip right here can be left alone to remove the back. There are also screws underneath the, the ports. On the left hand side, there's two screw holes, so you have to pop over from the rubber and port cover, and they're right here. The screw points for the front, I believe there are one, two, you don't have to, this is a cover, but you do not have to remove that. And three, maybe just three screws that have to be more removed. Now once you have removed all those screws, there's also two screws that are inside of the, um, the battery holder. There's a middle one that's right inside of the spring at the bottom, but that one actually is the spring. Well, it's not the spring, but it's actually um, one of the screws you can see through right here. So you don't want to remove that screw that's actually, you see through the, the spring at the bottom because that's actually connected to this plate here. And you don't need to disassemble that yet. That is actually... I'm holding um, one of these circuit boards in place. So, once you pop the case off, there's two ribbon cables. You can see there's a, uh, a ribbon cable here. And there is another ribbon cable that's right here. These have little black parts on top of it that have to be flipped up. And flipping those up is all you have to do. And then you can slide the little ribbon cables out. This is kind of a little sticky pad here. I don't know if it's for heat dispersion or what, but um, be careful when you separate it from the camera body. It may hold on to things that are back here. Also, these cables, as I mentioned, are, are pretty short. So 
if you're not careful, um, you might just break them off or um, and damage them or damage the little connectors that they're connected to. Once you've cracked the case, you can see how uh, you pretty much have access to everything that's in here. Now when I was do doing that, um, there were some things that I, I noticed that um, kind of bugged me about the build quality of this, such as uh, like the little clips right here where there was a screw. There was um, one, two, three, there was four screws that were that were holding on this left hand side. But this screw hole right here, the plastic is very thin on most of them. So even though it has a magnesium alloy body, some of this stuff is super, super skinny. Look at that. It's almost like aluminum foil. So even though it's magnesium alloy or whatever it is that they're calling it, it uh, I don't think it's as durable as, as you might believe. Um, as you can see, this one has been dropped and there's actually a crack right here, a crack across here. Now, I mean, that's probably a lot more than this was meant to take. But um, also when you're opening it, this little battery retainer, be careful when you're separating the body because it will hold in sometimes this uh, part of the lip and that might keep the piece from coming apart. As far as designing the camera, I, I think it's pretty incredible that they're able to cram pack so much stuff into here. There's just um, a ton of stuff in here, but I, I will say that there are some things that I think were designed for aesthetics and are um, a really poor choice, um, such as uh, the on-off. This one actually had a problem where the camera was on all the time. It could not be turned off. So to turn it off, I had to eject the battery, which really isn't good because that means the shutter might not um, close all the way. So if you're cleaning it or something like that, it could be exposed. I'm not really sure uh, what uh, goes through when it shuts down. But I, I would hear a click and things like that when, after I fix this switch. So I know there was things that were happening that by removing the battery probably um, were being circumvented. Now, the way I fixed this on-off switch, which I was not able to find anything online about, um, the way that I fixed it was actually I had to take out one, two, three of these screws right here, four screws. And these screws um, were holding down these metal brackets around here. So I took those metal brackets out and underneath those metal brackets is this little circuit board. There's, I think, one more screw under that circuit board and when you pop it off, there's the connections for the dial. There's the little um, part, bottom part of the dial so when you spin it, it has those little feeler fingers that helps it that helps it uh, um, change modes. Now, be careful because there's a couple of things about this dial. When you take it apart, um, first of all, underneath this part of the dial, there are two spring-loaded ball bearings, and they're kind of on either side of this. And those spring-loaded ball bearings, I, I think, um, are actually what causes the resistance. So when you move the switch, you feel that click. Also on this side, underneath the circuit board, there is a, a spring that's also with it as a ball bearing that um, that gives it resistance when you are turning this dial, and that gives it that 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 click. So be careful about that. There's also a rubber grommet that uh, it's almost like a little skinny rubber band that goes around um, the body underneath this cap. So there's a lot of stuff going on over here. Now what ended up being wrong with this was sand or something must have worked its way in there or I'm not sure, something. But um, the design of this switch, it's not connected directly to, this is the on-off switch right here. This little white piece. That's what causes the camera to turn on and off. This physical one actually is connected to this ring and this ring has a little grooves on the bottom side of the ring and the, depending on where the position of the grooves are, there's a pin here 
wherever the position of this ring is, there's a pin right here. And that uh, pin, when you when you push the, the on-off switch, those grooves end up pushing down on a pin, and that pin pushes against this little black um, rocker, and that rocker is what turns the on and off switch. So what happened was the little pin, the, the hole that the pin was in, was filled with something, so the pin was seized, and so when I would go to turn it off, the pin would stay up, and so it was always in this position. It was always in the on position, and so when I would turn it off, the pin would the, the pin would stay in the uh, on position, and that's why I ended up having to remove the battery because even turning it off, the pin couldn't retract, and so the rocker switch would not go down, and since the rocker switch didn't go down, the the on off switch wasn't able to uh, move and turn off the camera. Now what I ended up doing is after I disassembled this. I used a white lithium grease, and I just, uh, first I cleaned off all the little bearing parts and things, and then I went ahead and I uh, greased them with uh, bearing, or not bearing, but the white lithium grease, and then reinstalled them, made sure that the little places that moved back and forth were um, nice and clean so that they could smoothly um, articulate. I think they did this just for aesthetics right here, having that switch, because it would have been seems more mechanically sound to have something directly connected to this switch so that uh, you wouldn't have this problem because there's a lot going on here to turn it on and off not just the switch the other thing is um, inside of here there's uh, a piece and I, I think that I'm not really sure what this is but uh, first of all there's a light underneath here and there's some, a couple of little rubber or foam things and uh, mine the stickiness came off of those little foam parts and they kind of just wanted to fall out so um, you just have to be careful. The little, there's like one, two, I think there's like two foam pieces. And there's one that's above this little, um, I think it's a, a red eye reduction light or something. But um, this little part right here, uh, this little port, there's a little piece of copper and it's has a screw that keeps it retained to this. Or a, um, see right here, it retains that piece of copper and that copper is soldered to this board. So after I unscrewed these, I was able to, you know, it's very soft. I was able to push up the board, but eventually after moving the board around while I was greasing the parts underneath, the piece of copper broke from the board. Now, it wasn't hard to solder it back on, but just be careful because this, unless you figure out how to take this part off and actually remove it, it's still connected by this little piece of copper. So... You can easily access it, but just be careful because it can break. Anyways, um, so this one this one only has uh, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different places where it screws. So it's got two that connect to the back cover. It has um, two that are inside the battery port. It has two that are underneath the front little cowling. It has one that's underneath the front rubber grip on the left side. And it has one that's on the left side of the camera. And that, uh, that left side one is right underneath the, there's a, there's the port cover. I think the port cover is a little plastic um, bevel type thing, and once you remove that bevel, it's underneath the bevel. So you have to remove the bevel to access the screw that's underneath it. Anyways, that is just a little look inside the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II. I think it's a pretty nice little camera. But um, one thing is, I'm not going to probably keep it because the autofocus in uh, in the tracking mode, it's uh, pretty documented that there's like a lot of, it doesn't automatically just focus. In single point focus, it does pretty good. But um, I do a lot of sports and things like that, and I my hit rate is very low on this. And that's just probably part of my skill too, but 
the I don't have a lot of confidence in its tracking. And it's it's great because it could fit in my pocket, but the hit rate is just not high enough for me, not compared to my my D4. So um, it's good a good little camera, especially for video. I thought for video this camera is fantastic. It has the, the IBIS in it, and it shoots pretty good stuff. Now the next thing I'm gonna have to try to work on actually is the HDMI port. There is a little piece that chipped off inside, and it works, but two of the prongs, they don't have anything to reinforce them, so I thought it would be good to try to do something about that. But I like this camera. I, I think it's a good camera. It just has some quirks about it that keep it from being my um, daily driver.